Welcome back. We're soldiering on because I really want to finish this chapter. Look, another letter from Beatrice. Huh? What did you say? Ooh, do we have another one? Maria was pointing at the top of the table, where the canned food everyone had been eating just now still lay. A western envelope from Beatrice certainly was sitting there, but so what? What in the... Aunt Natsuhi let out a hysterical cry, looking between her own hand and the table. Because the envelope she had just opened was still grasped in her hand. Ooh, magic. So why is there still an envelope on the table? Why? What the hell? What's going on, Maria? Now they want to believe her. Where did that envelope come from? Just now, I looked and it was lying there. Ooh. I don't know anything. Anything. Hmm, seems suspicious to me, Kumasawa-san. This isn't funny. There's only the eight of us here. There's no way some ninth person snuck in. There wasn't enough time during the few seconds that we gathered around the portrait, right? Uh, ooh, oh, oh, okay, we went black and all of a sudden Natsuhi's got a gun. Get back, all of you. Back against the wall. Ooh, so assertive. Aunt Natsuhi was pointing the rifle at Genji and the others, bellowing at them. Genji-san was overpowered, his face looking like he didn't have a clue what was going on. Of course, I felt the same, but a few moments late, I reached the same conclusion Aunt Natsuhi had. Until just a few seconds ago, there had been no letter like this on the table. And nobody entered this room. That means someone amongst us placed it there during the few seconds when everyone was looking away, preoccupied with the portrait. Batlakun, open that envelope and read what's inside. Sh sure. I picked it up. It was still sealed with wax. Even without disturbing its contents, I realized that this was an as yet unopened envelope, an unknown envelope. Without relying on a paper knife, I tore it open and pulled out the letter inside. Hopefully it's more interesting than the last one. The contents were as follows. Are you enjoying the riddle of Kinzo Summer's epitaph? As you are all probably aware, you have very little time remaining. Please abandon any naive hopes of escaping after the storm passes. This game can only end with my victory or yours. When time runs out, I will win by default. There will be no ties. Make sure that you do not misunderstand your current situation. That's what it says. So find the gold or die. It isn't clear who put this letter there. However, I have been able to narrow down the list of suspects. It's you all! I have narrowed the list down! It's everyone! M madam That's just too horrible! Just before I moved towards the portrait, I set a can of food down here. At that time, there definitely wasn't anything as strange as this letter there. And at that time, Jessica, George Kun, and Batla Kun were already in front of the portrait. And they didn't leave the spot in front of the portrait until the letter appeared. So the person who set that letter down is one of you four. Well, that's not all of you, is it? Beatrice is here. Ew. We aren't Beatrice. <laughs> she, she, her eyes. She's so disinterested. Ah, oh, all of my family are morons. Sigh. Beatrice exists. Silence. Oh, did she just cock that? I don't know whether I should suspect one of you or all of you. All of you is probably better. But without a doubt, at least one among you is the culprit. That's right. There can't be a 19th person. There's no way witches exist. Oh, I'm gonna slap them every time they say that. Even when Kanon Kun was killed. Yeah, that could be explained if Kumasawa-san was the one who did it. It was the old lady all along. The truth is that Kumasawa-san entered the boiler room with Kanon-kun and killed him. And then she lied, saying he had already fallen when she got there. 
You're making a mistake, milady. Why would I do something like that? I don't have the slightest idea how my parents were killed in that closed room. But when they were killed, everyone except for the servants had an alibi. Oh, Nanny's glasses fogged over. The only ones who didn't were the servants. That's literally what you just said. But does that really mean it's okay to suspect them? Yes, now that you mention it, they have no alibi for any of the cases. Mm. Should we really be so quick to make that judgement? But this time, in this room, in this place, in this moment, in this minimally small bit of time and space, it's obvious. Only one of the four of them could have set the letter there in our blind spot. We can't tell who put it there, but it's obvious that one of the four did it. Is it? Is it, Batlakun? N natsuhi san Please, calm yourself. A lot has happened today. I understand how much strain is on your mind right now. Dr. Nanjo, it truly pains me to call you suspicious. However, you are father's personal doctor and his closest friend. You have been by his side for many years and you might even know about Beatrice. Could you be hiding some kind of old obligation? Of course not. Look, I'm having a stroke. Calm yourself. It was pitiful to watch Dr. Nandro frantically pleading his innocence. It was probably a normal reaction that anyone would give if they were suspected. Kumasawa was the same. Ever since Jessica voiced her suspicions of Kumasawa murdering Kanon, Kumasawa had been totally flustered. And that was why Genji's still calm appearance looked so bold. Aunt Natsuhi pointed the barrel of the gun. Genji? You were grandfather's number one subordinate. Was Beatrice an illusion you showed to father? With you as the performer? What? I told you it was Genji in the dress. If by suspecting me you recognize me as the master's greatest servant, then I count it as a great honor, regardless of the circumstances. However, I am not the one who put the letter there. Do you expect us to just accept that? You must be the ringleader. Maybe Kumasawa and Dr. Nanjo are your accomplices. And Maria-chan, too. It was totally Maria. Not content to suspect just the adults, Aunt Natsuhi pointed the gun relentlessly at Maria, too. Oh, oh my. That's a lot of child abuse. But Maria acted as though nothing had happened. Or maybe she thought she would be fine, even if she was shot. Maria-chan? By this point, we can no longer remove someone from suspicion just because they're young. So for the last time, let me ask you the question that everyone's had since last night. Oh, really, do we have to? Yesterday, who was the Beatrice who handed you that letter? You slap her, Maria. D do it. Maria, don't dodge the question. Make it clear. Who gave you that letter? Kee-hee-hee-hee-hee. <laughs> How many times do I have to tell you? It's Beatrice, the thousand-year-old golden witch. If you want to know what she looks like, just turn around. <gasps> Ooh, see, she's right there. Beatrice is. <laughs> Don't mess with us, Maria. Enough, Jessica. Maria, too. Don't you understand the situation? What are you hoping to gain by saying stuff like that? Stop stirring each other up pointlessly. Never. I don't understand. Who do you all who do you all want the culprit to be? You only believe in Beatrice when you don't want to suspect one of your own. When you're trying to settle a grudge because someone who's close to you has been killed, only then do you want to believe in a human you can attack with violence and deny Beatrice. That's why you can't see her. Beatrice exists. You all can't see her. Silence! I don't want to label you as the culprit, but there is no longer any doubt that you enjoy making this situation unpleasant and are providing assistance to the enemy. <laughs> then what will you do? Shoot me? I don't mind. Very soon the door to the Golden Land will be opened. Then all the dead will be resurrected. <gasps> Zombies? Right now, death is nothing to be afraid of. I want zombies. That's a lot of laughter. Kee hee 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 h
Mom, she really is suspicious. We can't keep her with us. Really, are you really going to toss out a nine-year-old girl? But Aunt Natsuhi, please, calm down. There's no reason to shoot Maria, seriously. Please remain composed. The letter was meant to provoke us, but it's nothing to be afraid of. Even the culprit is scared of what will happen tomorrow. They're scared of the police. Right now, this island is free from the reach of the law, but that's only because it's isolated by this typhoon. Once the typhoon passes, the law will return. So you mustn't shoot. How can you stay so calm, George Nisan? One of these four is the culprit. No, maybe all four of them are working together. How can you stay so calm when one of these four might be the culprit who killed your parents? Even I have the desire to find the culprit and kill them. But that would be simple barbarism. I will leave the judgment of crimes to the law. So no matter how suspicious they are, you mustn't pull that trigger. Now I feel the same as George, Aniki. Aunt Natsuhi, get a hold of yourself for a second. Anyway, it'd be bad to shoot. Ihihi. <laughs> In times like this, I hear you should tilt your head back and say, Stay cool three times. What? Let me make this clear. Witches don't exist. Not on Nokkenjima, not in the Ushiromiya mansion. I declare it as Ushiromiya Natsuhi, representative of the Ushiromiya family. There's no witch here. I won't accept Beatrice. No matter what you're planning, I won't let you lay one finger on my daughter or the rest of them. That's my duty as a mother and as representative to the family. Those words were the final words of farewell that settled everything. To protect her daughter, Aunt Natsuhi would regard any suspicious person as an enemy. The only reason George Anarchy and I were standing on this side was because, by coincidence, we had a clear alibi regarding the letter. If I hadn't approached the portrait, I would also be at the other end of that gun barrel, treated like a criminal. But even though part of me thought that, part of me was thinking that chasing all the suspicious people from this room would finally guarantee our safety. Genji-san and Kumasawa-san and Dr. Nanjo. All of them were on Grandfather's side. Maybe you could say that once Maria started blindly believing in Beatrice, she was also on Grandfather's side. That's right, they're all suspicious. But is this really okay? If we throw out all the suspicious ones in such a lawless way, will we still have the right to defy the lawlessness of the witch? This music is groovy. Aunt Natsuhi didn't tell them to leave with her own words, but with wordless pressa, pressure, she induced them to say that themselves. Because if Dr. Nanjo didn't say those words, this cold silence would surely continue forever. <laughs> Calm yourself, Natsuhi-san. Still, I understand your feelings well. I myself feel like there's something wrong with my head after all these strange repeated incidents. So I understand well why you want to suspect us. If you really have nothing to do with this, then my actions now would be beyond rude. Yeah, no shit. However, please understand, just this once. Very well. Thought she was going to shoot him then. Let's leave the room. What do you say, Genji-san? Shall we return to the parlor and continue our chess game? If that is what you wish, by all means. I don't want to. After all, that means we'll have to leave this room knowing that the wolf is among us, right? I don't want to. Madam, please forgive me. Eek! It was obvious what Kumasawa-san was trying to say. If she was innocent, then she was being ejected into dangerous territory along with the culprit. 
In the current situation, urging her to leave this room along with the suspects was almost exactly the same as letting her get killed. However, Kumasawa-san really was suspicious just for being the first one to discover that Kanon-kun had been murdered. It was the butterflies. The butterflies did it. At that time, everyone except Kumasawa-san had an alibi. Unless we could, unless we could prove the existence of some contraption, or the existence of some 19th person, oh, on and on with the 19th person, Kumasawa-san was by far the most likely suspect. I didn't want to believe it. However, Aunt Natsuhi and the rest of us were in such a difficult situation that we couldn't help suspecting her as well. So we didn't say anything to stop Aunt Natsuhi from trying to oppressively chase them from the room. We had stopped her from shooting, but we were passively agreeing to chase the others out of the room. On top of that, Maria spoke to the fretful Kumasawa-san. It's okay. Beatrice is kind to those who respect her. You believe that Beatrice exists. So it'll definitely be okay. I'll watch TV in the parlor. Let's watch it together. It's so boring here without TV. <laughs> it looked like Kumasawa found Maria's roguish laugh very frightening. However, the three other people had agreed to leave the room. Kumasawa couldn't fight the flow and had to agree, crying as she went. You monsters. Well then, Natsuhi-san, that will be all for tonight. Let us meet again tomorrow. If we live... Yes, please understand, at least for tonight. When the police come, all of us will surely apologize for our rudeness. You may play chess, but do it in a safe place if you can. Genji, I leave them in your hands. <laughs> Certainly. Ho ho ho. It can't be helped, can it? They always say that the most frightening bears are those with their children. Genji, Kumasawa, my sincere apologies. Let us meet again tomorrow. Maria-chan too. Please forgive your cold aunt. Yeah, that's going to make for some awkward family reunions in the future. Ew. I forgive you. Ew. <laughs> Madam, the keys to this room. I will hand both over to you. Genji-san pulled two golden keys from his pocket and handed them to Aunt Natsuhi. And I will also hand over my bundle of keys to the inside of the mansion. He took out a bundle of about ten keys of various shapes and handed it over. To the servants, those keys were probably proof of their position. Being placed in charge of those keys meant that they were trusted, relied upon. When they were forced to return them, it meant that they had lost that trust. Thinking about it this way, to Genji-san, who had worked here for a span of many years, there could be no greater shame. However, Genji-san's usual indifferent expression remained on his face. Genji, I had planned that after father passed away, I would reward you for your many years of hard work and allow you to retire. To treat you like this makes me feel ashamed from the bottom of my heart. I have already received the master's favor. Everything I have done until today has been in repayment for that. Please, do not worry over it. Well then, shall we, everyone? Good night to you all. Ew. Good night. Good night to you too, Battler. Ew. Yeah, that's not creepy. Ah, uh, Maria. Wait a sec. Knowledge of guilt made me call Maria back. I groped around in my pocket and took out that scorpion keychain. This repels magic, right? Wear it. You? Didn't you say you dropped it? Back then I got ticked off and just bluffed that I'd lost it. There's no way I'd lose the precious charm you gave me. Oh. Maria silently took the charm. I was unable to say anything after that. Well then, everyone. Good night to you.
We watch them leave, our expressions completely worn out, and we weren't even able to respond. Rip the servants. Until the door closed and we heard the auto lock, we were unable to breathe. Then we were finally allowed to take a breath. After that, I noticed that Beatrice's letter, which I had been gripping the whole time and which was soaked with my sweat, actually had two sheets. The paper had been tightly stuck together, so I'd mistakenly thought there was only one. There were no characters on the second sheet. The thing drawn there was a magic circle, written with a red ink like blood. Just like how every magic circle up until then had been different. This magic circle was one I'd never laid eyes upon before. Wait. She needs four more, right? There's now four left in the room. And a magic circle. I can see where this is going. Inside the circle, a large triangle and a small triangle were fit together in a simple design. But just as before, there was writing in Hebrew, and it seemed clear that it held some kind of meaning. I wanted to know what that could be, but we had just chased Maria, the only person who could understand the meaning of the magic circles, out of the room. Congratulations, good job. I thought of this magic circle as Beatrice's second message. What does this magic circle mean? Damn it. It means rip. After chasing out all the suspicious people, all we had to do was stay barricaded here until morning and everything would probably be over. Once the typhoon has passed, when the seagulls cry, they said the thing. Will everything be resolved? But the letter, which had unexpectedly appeared in the study, forced us to reject that naivety. It had made it very clear that if time ran out, it would mean the witch's victory. When time runs out, is the witch planning to take on the offensive? This time, is she planning to display some fearful magical power? Maybe something that could have been used to kill six adults at once. God, I hope she appears by the end of this. I just, even if it's just like a single shot of her at the end, it's all I want. Wait, when is time supposed to run out anyway? I don't know anything. Didn't she say before the typhoon left? With this, we should finally be safe. Finally. Definitely. It's all okay. We can all go home. Even as she said that, Aunt Natsuhi couldn't stop gripping the rifle. There was no release in the tension of her expression. Of course, none of us felt like breathing a sigh of relief. At least not until we could hear the cry of seagulls once more. They said the thing! Ooh. Alright, what's the time? Dun 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 Ooh, ooh, ah! Oh, I thought it was gonna be midnight. Probably 11.30, I'm guessing. After we chased them out, nobody wanted to say anything. All of the suspicious ones had been driven away. Even though we knew there might be some innocence among them, we still did it. We chased them out of this paradise, where people didn't have to suspect each other. But our motive for chasing them out was of suspicion of one person towards another, the worst kind of crime for a human. Ah, uh, I dare say there are worse crimes than suspecting someone. If we had accepted the existence of a 19th person of the witch, then we all might still be talking face to face, trusting in each other. In that instant, we had agreed to chase out all of the suspicious people, we just said this like five times. But had that been the right thing to do? During this endless silence, we could do nothing but be quietly tormented by that sin. Aunt Natsuhi faced the door without letting go of her rifle for even an instant, sitting far back on the sofa. She would probably spend the night staring at the door without a wink of sleep. George Anarchy gazed through a gap of the closed curtains by the window, looking down at the courtyard and the mansion that surrounded it. I didn't know whether he was checking to see if a suspicious shadow would become visible through the window, or whether he was wondering to himself about something. Jessica was sitting sideways on the sofa next to Aunt Natsuhi, with a dead expression on her face. 
and every once in a while, as though she'd just remembered something, she'd take out the inhaler she had used during her asthma attack and stick it in her mouth. I just heard it from Anarchy. But apparently Jessica liked Kanonkun. Ooh, the plot thickens. It was apparently so vague that she hadn't realised it herself. Aww. You know? It's the kind of thing other people tend to spot before the person in question realises it. This is very true. Which means, she might have first learned of her feelings when the person she liked died. Oh, that sucks. It must have been so terrible. So sad. Come to think of it, Kanonkun was the one who handed her that inhaler. Maybe she was remembering that. Aww. I was fishing around in Grandfather's study, thinking I'd research the meaning of the magic circle on the letter's second sheet. Even though we were shut up in here with, in a defensive position, my rebellious nature made me want to find some key, some way to resist. After all, we've got plenty of time before tomorrow morning. Who could fault me for how I used that time? No one else showed that much interest in this magic circle. Its meaning was unknown, and once we understood it, we were sure to find some message that would cause us unnecessary anguish. I felt the same way. However, I couldn't just ignore it, so I killed time by going through the motions of researching it. You sure are enthusiastic. Did you find anything that might serve as a hint? Not a thing. The first tough part is finding a book written in Japanese. Just how many languages could Grandfather read? All of them. He's incredible. Aren't you tired, Batlakun? You should take a rest while someone else stays awake. Aunt Natsuhi said she'd stay up all night for us, but there's no way her body can handle that. Are you old shaming her? We should take turns sleeping. Then you sleep first, Aniki. I'll keep researching till I get sleepy. You mean that magic circle just now? Yeah. We've got plenty of time to kill. I thought it'd be interesting to find out what kind of message Beatrice Summer put in it. Give it a rest. Mess around with stuff like that and you'll end up getting possessed by something weird. Don't worry. I've been certified by Maria. She said I've got no spiritual talent at all. <laughs> Were we too cruel to Maria? Jessica, you mustn't think that now. But Mom, if Maria wasn't involved and there's a culprit besides her, then she's obviously a soft target for the murderer. What the hell is a soft target? If she's killed because of this, then we've just left her to die. A gloomy silence settled once again. It looked like Jessica regretted letting her emotions take hold of her and snapping at Maria. She had always been like that. Always acting tough and regretting it later. I understand how you feel, but Maria was in close contact with the culprit. And she might have been siding with them, talking like that over and over to further confuse matters. I am relieved that we chased them out. That's pretty harsh, Aunt Natsuhi. Couldn't it just have been the nonsense of a nine-year-old girl? It probably wasn't very convincing to hear that coming from me. I myself thought Maria was creepy on several occasions, even doubting her true nature. And when Maria was chased out of this room, I couldn't deny I had felt some relief. Because you're all monsters. If that is the case, then tomorrow we will apologise for what we did. I will take full responsibility for chasing them out of this room. This isn't something the rest of you have to worry about. I could feel a tragic determination in Aunt Natsuhi's words. To protect her own daughter, she had resolutely chased out the suspicious ones. And if, as a result, she had to watch the people who had unfortunately been suspected die, so be it. She was prepared to take full responsibility. Why does Maria have to keep saying stuff like that? She's bringing about her own ruin. Please, she's nine. I think the reason Maria-chan adores witches and magic so much might be Aunt Rosa. Aunt Rosa? What does she have to do with this? Didn't you realize it too, Batlakun? 
Maria-chan's real father ran off somewhere a long time ago. Although Aunt Rosa tried to confuse the issue by saying he's on a foreign business trip. Ah yes, the business trip. It's been nine years now. Talking about Rosa-san's family has become a kind of taboo in the Ushilomiya family. I think Aunt Rosa thought about remarrying. But I also believe Maria-chan may have became her shackles and made that quite difficult. That is no way to talk about a child. After all, she sometimes got really emotional and hit Maria-chan. Yes, I still remember. I agree with you there. It looked like Aunt Rosa was trying hard to like Maria. Which means that she didn't really like her. That's a bit harsh. She might have thought of Maria as someone who stood in the way of her remarrying. I think that emotional rejection from her mother must have left some deep scars on her young heart. Ah, uh, this is getting a bit too deep now. So she learned about this occult hobby from somewhere and immersed herself in it to bury the holes in her heart. I didn't ask for this realism. Did you know? To Maria-chan, the image of a witch isn't negative at all. Remember yesterday at the beach when she showed us her notebook? Yeah. It was full of all those fun-looking scribbles. Yesterday, when we were down by the beach, doubting the witch, Maria got all riled up and started explaining about witches. And not one of the pages had shown a picture of an ugly witch. They were all brightly coloured, beautiful, cute witches, who looked like they were having fun. There was absolutely nothing sinister about them, like a boy might have imagined. They were beings adorned with beautiful dresses who could grant anyone's dreams with their mysterious magic and who made everyone happy. Maria felt the sorrow of not being loved by her mother. Had she sought help from witches as beings who could give her happiness and save her? Someday, a witch would come and using her wonderful magic would bring Maria happiness. Even though she believed that, as she grew older, she had to face reality as her fleeting dreams were sliced to ribbons one by one. If something claiming to be the witch of Dok Kenjima appeared in front of a girl like that, whispering that she'd take Maria to the Golden Land, where Maria could be happy. I... Now that it's come to this, I want to confess what's in my heart. Throwing out Maria-chan, no, Genji-san and the rest too, was probably the wrong thing to do, I think. It wasn't pleasant. <laughs> That's one way to put it. It wasn't pleasant. Since Jessica had been the one to face them and slam them with words of rejection, her conscience must be tormenting her a lot right now. Then how do you all explain that letter? No one could have said it there except the four people standing behind us. I made sure of that with my own eyes. Oh, the gun's gone. If those four are innocent, how is that letter placed in a closed room with eight people? That's right. When you put it that way, those four really do seem suspicious. But it's all useless. Deta. There it is. It's all useless. Ah, it's all useless. Useless? What is? You. Right. It might not be worth anything anymore, but oh, let me spin the chessboard around again. Just one episode. I just want to go one episode without spinning a chessboard. In other words, also that. If one of those four really was the culprit, isn't that weird? That's right. Wasn't setting that letter openly on the table the same as confessing that one of them was the culprit? You're right, that's weird. If they were going to do it, you'd think they'd put it in the crack of the door, for example, to make it look like someone had slipped it in from the outside. Of course, they should have known they'd be suspected if they didn't make it look... Of course, they should have known that they'd be suspected if they didn't make it look like the culprit was outside the room. Yeah, that's it exactly. If the culprit was one of those four, setting that letter right in the middle of the table would be both risky and meaningless. But putting aside whatever trick was used to set it there, if we assume that the culprit is someone other than those four, in other words, someone who was outside the room, then they had a lot to gain from that letter. Enough, Batlakun. It's meaningless to discuss such matters now. 
Natsuhisa-san quickly guessed what I was getting at. No, maybe she had thought of it long before I had and had simply held her tongue. If the culprit's outside the room, then they'd be totally stuck the moment we shut... They'd be totally stuck the moment we shut ourselves up in a closed room like this. That's right. It's the same as my theory about how Grandfather disappeared from this room, isn't it? Oh look, it's the diagram. That theory was that Grandfather left the room of his own accord. If the culprit used some tactic to lure him out, and Grandfather left of his own accord, then... Come to think of it, when we found the scorpion magic circle on the doorknob to the study, Maria said it herself. Beatrice couldn't get through this door. But she could induce someone to leave of their own accord. Which would mean... We fell for the culprit's trap completely. And sent out some new potential sacrifices. Well done. Genji and the rest aren't fools. When they try to protect themselves, they should find the next safest place after this room. They will definitely be able to hide themselves there. You killed them, Natsuhi. You killed them. Aunt Natsuhi hadn't answered the question. Aunt Natsuhi herself had realized that if the culprit wasn't in our group back then, that letter would make sense as a trap. However, it wasn't worth the risk of calling back the people she had once thrown out. To Aunt Natsuhi, right now, her greatest and only duty was to protect the children. By her thinking, in order to do that, a few sacrifices were unavoidable. Um, Maria Chan is one of the children, just saying. Hey Aunt Natsuhi, let me say something a little harsh, okay? <laughs> At that time, what if, by coincidence, Jessica had also been standing behind you? Would you have chased Jessica from the room too? It's true that a lot of brutal things have happened. But as a mother, you thought you should protect your daughter no matter what. Because of that duty, you chased them out, even though you knew that you'd eventually be held responsible for it. It's not like I'm condemning that. But, um... I was just thinking about what a great mother Jessica has. That's right. You've been dealing with these incidents since morning and you've been pulling all of us along the whole time, without losing your composure. If you were all confused too, the rest of us would probably be in the culprit's grasp by now. So I think we all have to thank you. Thank you. So what you two are trying to say is that you want her to act as Maria's mother too. I always thought of Maria as a real little sister, and adored her. And yet, a few things happened. We got a little confused, yeah, that's a polite way of putting it. And I've said a lot of mean things to her, hurting her. Mom, please. Let's stay together with Maria. No, everyone. There was no culprit among us. The culprit in this case is the witch, Beatrice, okay? So let's stop suspecting each other. Too late, they're probably already dead. Aunt Natsuhi closed her eyes for a short while. Was she coping with her throbbing headache again? Or was she thinking of something? You are... My precious daughter. The one I finally received a whole 12 years after I married my husband. I would become the worst kind of demon to protect you. Oh. That was some pretty strong language at the end there. She realized very well that her words were an idealized view of what a mother should be. But even so, she was strongly resolved to protect her daughter, even if she had to become a demon. But that was her guilty, con guilty conscience tormenting her. Today's been so long. Oh, I feel that. So many things happened in one day. Like repeating, over, and over, and over, and over. And we've been driven into a corner so thoroughly. I wonder if we have the right to greet tomorrow the way we are now. No, you're all assholes. There it is. I found it. It's this magic circle. Inside the book I'd been flipping through, I had found the same magic circle that had been drawn on the second sheet of the letter. George Anarchy peered at it as well. This magic circle name was the third magic circle of Mars. Yep, totally knew it. 
The Hebrew written on it was from Psalm 77 verse 13 of the Old Testament. Oh yeah, totally read that. What God is so great as our God? The meaning of the magic circle was discord. Hmm. Agitate internal divisions and cause the enemy to bring about their own downfall. Didn't Sun Tzu say something about that once? Wait a sec. Seriously? Could there be a more fitting way to describe our current situation and mental state? We couldn't help but be stunned into silence. So, this letter was a trap? Oh my god, you're all idiots. How did they place it here? There wasn't anyone in this room except for the eight of us, right? Anyway, let's ignore how they got in here for now. The culprit was after just one thing. They wanted to spread the seeds of doubt inside this impregnable room. Ew, that's, that's, that's not a nice metaphor. And use us to throw the sacrificial sheep out. In that case, they're after the people who went out of the room. <gasps> Shocking. Mom, what should we do? Those four are in danger. It wasn't surprising that Aunt Natsuhi remained unpleasantly silent. Even if this was all a trap by the culprit, even if the four who had been chased out of the room were in danger, it had nothing to do with the safety of the four people in here. And there was no way to prove the innocence of the four people we'd chased out. If we're willing to let them die, then we shouldn't leave this room no matter what. That way is safest. At that time, suddenly the piercing sound of a phone rang through the room. It was the antique extension phone set on the table in Grandfather's study. Weren't all the phone lines cut? It had rung right after we started talking about the letter being a trap. It was natural we'd think of it as an SOS from the ones we'd chased out. But then Aunt Natsuhi spoke. Guns back. Why a phone call? The phones should be broken down and unusable. That doesn't matter. If that's Maria calling for help. If the problem with the phones was the culprit's work in the first place, then this call is... probably... With that one sentence, the ring of the phone, which had once sounded like a scream for help, now started to sound like a ghastly lure from some unknown person. Aunt Natsuhi hesitated over whether to pick up the receiver. Do it! Do it. L let's pick it up, Aunt Natsuhi. The phones might have been fixed for some reason. It could still be an urgent call from Maria-chan and the rest. That's right. And if it actually is a call from the culprit, Bring it on. Why don't we listen to what they've got to say? It's just a phone call. No matter what they babble through the receiver, it's not like it's going to hurt you. Oh, I think they could find some choice words to hurt you, Jessica. If you don't pick it up, then I will. I will take it. Hello? Moshi moshi. Yes, this is dog. I stretched out my hand to take the receiver, but Aunt Natsuhi grabbed it before I could reach. We all held our breath, trying to figure out who the person on the other end of the phone was. But for a while, Aunt Natsuhi kept saying, Hello? Moshi moshi? A silent phone call? There's no way Maria and the others would do something so creepy. Which means, could this phone call possibly really be? Natsuhi stopped repeating hello and strained her ears, because she thought she heard something far away on the other end of the receiver. What was that? Huh? Is someone... Nani? Singing? Ooh. What do you mean, singing? I don't know. Faintly, from the other end of the phone, I can hear someone singing. I wonder what it could be. Give it here for a sec. Hello? Mushi Mushi? I half forced the receiver from the stunned Aunt Natsuhi's hand and pressed it against my ear. At first, I didn't hear anything, but because I had been told about it beforehand, I noticed. It sounded far away from the receiver, rather than someone speaking in a quiet voice. And it sounded like a girl singing a song. That voice did sound like Maria's, but that just made the situation even more inexplicable. At the very least, the one who had made the phone call hadn't been Maria. 
After all, Maria was singing some song far away from the receiver. In that case, the one who made the phone call should have been Genji-san, Kumasawa-san, or Dr. Nanjo. And yet, they weren't saying anything. Why? For what reason? The person who made this phone call, who was it? Dare nandaro? Hey! Hello? Moshimash! Who is it? Answer me! Is that Maria singing? Answer me! What's happening? What is it? I don't know. All I can say is, this is probably a trap, and Maria's in trouble. Aunt Natsuhi took the receiver again, but after yelling into it several more times, she realized that she wasn't getting anywhere, and hung up. After that, she dialed quickly. Then she clicked her tongue. That's right, if the phones are working, we should be able to reach the police. But judging by Aunt Natsuhi's reaction, the outside telephone line still didn't connect. Because magic. Let's go. Even if we know it might be a trap, we have to go. Yeah, definitely. Jessica, Aunt Natsuhi, stay here. When Anaki and I tried to dash out, Aunt Natsuhi stopped us. Hold it. I cannot let you go alone. Take this. I will go too. Jessica, wait here. Oh, I don't know if that's a good idea. Wait, so I'll be the only one left out? Nice try, but I'm going too. Yeah, it might be better that way. If the goal of that phone call was to split us up further, it wouldn't be a good idea to leave someone to watch this room. There's no time to argue. Let's all go. Aunt Natsuhi raised the rifle high and took the lead. I couldn't go unarmed myself. I found a three-pronged candle stand and readied it. Oh yeah, he's gonna do a lot of damage with that. Although the pins on it used to fit candles... were short. What? Although the pins on it used to fit candles were short... Used to fit candles. Okay. Not used to. Used to. Naruhodo. Got it. It was almost like a three-pronged spear. Then the four of us left the study. We left the study, which should have been the safest place inside the mansion. By doing this, we had been lured out even though we had barricaded ourselves in a safe closed room. Perhaps we were stupid, doing exactly the same thing Grandfather had done when he disappeared from that room. And now he's toasty. Maria, where are you? Answer me. I listened closely but didn't hear anything. The mansion was vast, and since the passing typhoon was making its last stand, the sound of the rain was even noisier than before. Maria-chan said she wanted to watch TV in the parlor, right? Let's try going downstairs. That's right. Let's try there. Everyone, be mindful of your surroundings. Yeah! With Aunt Natsuhi in the center, her rifle readied and her finger on the trigger, we moved in a group, our backs together, checking our surroundings in all directions. It was just as though the magic of that magic circle designed to spread discord had worked. That's an odd sentence. We had split up, and furthermore, had been dragged out into dangerous territory. In other words, even now we were doing just what the culprit wanted us to do, because we were morons. This was a separate world where it wouldn't be odd for anything to suddenly occur. Aunt Natsuhi nervously pointed the barrel of the gun at every dark spot and shadow. It felt like that motion was out of fear rather than caution. But the rifle she held in her hand should have been a trump card that the culprit feared. I mean, she's made of nothing, so... Probably not. You know, I've been thinking. Or do tell us, George. It wouldn't be impossible to stick one of those ice picks into someone's chest, like in Kanonkun's case. But splitting the skull and sticking them into the forehead, like in my parents' case, wouldn't be that easy. You think the culprit had that kind of animal strength? They probably had some kind of weapon, a device that can shoot or pound in those ice picks. What? That handle was too short to be driven in that deeply by a human's strength alone. What about a witch? Either way, they have enough force to break through a skull. I heard Kanon's wound reached as far as his lungs. 
how long is the ice pick? If you happen to see your opponent, don't go forwards. You mustn't move away from my back. Just how sinister and frightening was the weapon that could shoot those creepy ice picks? <laughs> I'm just imagining Beatrice like wheeling this giant weapon machine around the mansion and like putting in her little ice picks into this giant slingshot and just firing them until she hits what she wants. And could I do anything to combat it with just this candle stand in my hand? Probably not, no. In the first murder, the culprit probably assaulted all four of our parents at once as they discussed the inheritance problem in the dining room. And there were four of us here now. RIP. Apparently, I wasn't the only person thinking this. George Anarchy, Jessica, and of course, Aunt Natsuhi, were stretching their senses to the utmost limit, in the highest and worst state of tension, slowly advancing one step, then another. Ah, what have we done? Because of the seeds of doubt spread by that one letter, we threw Maria and the rest into the middle of this terrifying world. We finally reached the first floor. The parlor was just across the hall. Ooh, ooh, are they dead? Are they dead? When we listened carefully, we could hear it faintly. Maria's eerie singing voice. She wasn't singing naturally, as though she were in a good mood. She was singing mechanically, like she was at a graduation ceremony and she'd been ordered to. Oh, I've seen a lot of those in my time. The song she sang was just a common folk song, one that everyone has probably sung in school at one time or another. But why that, in the middle of the night, alone, with all her heart, over and over? Why? Why not? Right after leaving the study, we had called out in loud voices, asking Maria where she was. But this time, no one said even a single word. We hid our breath and the sound of our footsteps, and, intensely focused on our surroundings to the point of being completely high-strung, we stepped forward. The door to the parlor was closed, but we could hear Maria's singing voice through it. Aunt Natsuhi put her hand on the handle of the doorknob, when George Anarchy stopped her. I'll open the door. Aunt Natsuhi, Batlakun, ready your weapons. Prepare the candlestick. Understood. Take care. They might attack as soon as we open it. George Nissan, watch yourself. Sure. Sure. Then, I'll open it. Huh? He tried to open it, but immediately felt the hard resistance of the lock. Aunt Natsuhi took the bundle of keys from her pocket and gave them to George. There were about ten keys and none of us had a clue which was which. Well, I mean, ten's not that many, just start trying. Because of this, George had to fumble around loudly, loudly and test several of the keys. Since we had hidden our footsteps, preparing to make a surprise attack on the room, this felt almost fatal. The whole time, we could hear Maria singing from the parlor, singing the same song over and over. It was like a broken, crazy cassette tape. We'd been in that room almost constantly since morning. All the frightening things had occurred outside that room. That had left us with the impression that only this room was safe. That baseless impression was quickly falling apart. Mm, it's open. Thank you. George Kuhn, Jessica, move behind me. Oh, I'm excited. What's in the room? What's in the room? Aunt Natsuhi, let's jump in at the same time and split up in different directions. What the hell is Batla Kuhn going to do with a candlestick? If we just stand around after opening the door, <laughs> those ice picks might fly right through the center. Yeah, Beatrice is on the other side with her slingshot machine. I agree. Ready? Eehehe. I really wish I could say no. I readied myself. If they're going to be throwing ice picks, I'll whack them with this candlestick. This has just turned into a comedy. Go! Aunt Natsuhi and I rammed into the door before flying into the parlor. Quickly splitting up left and right and searching the parlor for someone who might be waiting for us. But what our eyes landed upon... 
We'll find out in the next episode because this is the perfect place to end it and I'm excited to find out what their eyes landed upon. All right, I'll see you in the next one. See ya.